Hi, we are Hyper Jackets. Uh, we are the Hyperloop team of Georgia Institute of Technology, and today we will be presenting for the stability system in the guidance uh, category. So, uh, why do we need a stability system to begin with? Um, our team is using a direct drive. Uh, so, with very fast speeds, this is going to create uh, large vibrations just due to imperfections on the track. So we have to be able to damp these vibrations to make sure that our pod is safe and uh, can run functionally without having any mishaps. So our main design concept is that we are modeled off of a simplified train suspension system. Uh, a lot of high-speed trains and freight trains utilize primary and secondary horizontal and vertical stabilizer systems uh, separated by a bogey. But um, the bogey and secondary stabilizer systems are typically used for curved tracks and thus our design really only uses a primary system uh, for our pod suspension system. So getting into our actual design, each wheel will have an accompanying horizontal and vertical spring damper system. Uh, this suspension system will be attached to the main chassis and consists of a shock absorber mounted to two triangular brackets that are connected to a small wheel uh, that runs beneath the track. Um, this spring shock absorber combination will be attached to the wheel mounting brackets using titanium rods as thus the material strength will be greater to reduce connection failure of elements. These brackets were designed to distribute forces safely through the brackets and the pivot on the mounting bracket restricts the movement of the system to one plane. All right, so our vibration profile. And so we created this using simulation and this basically just shows what happens to our vibrations on the track as we increase the speed. So as you can see, over time, the vibrations start to tail off a little bit. It starts off with a lot of vibration. At the end, these vibrations are very, very small, like in between 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeters. And therefore, and, the, and these vibrations are totally normal. And we're, these are ideal for the safety of the pod. After we um, test our pod fully, these simulation results will be compared to our final testing, and then we can see how accurate our simulation is. All right, and then this is our FEA analysis for our stability system. And as you can see, our wheel is the main point of contact with the track. And as we look at our stress, our max stress is 224.3 megapascals and this is the yield stress of our um, aluminum is going to be 276 megapascals therefore we will never um, go into failure and we'll also never go into any sort of um, plastic deformation so the displacements and deformations seen by our material will always revert back to the original positions and therefore there's going to be no failure for materials So for our plans for manufacturing, uh, we will be outsourcing the shock absorber, the shaft colors that will hold the rods into place, and the wheel. Um, the two larger frames and the top bracket are going to be made out of aluminum 6061 and will be cut out with the OMAX Maxium 1515 water jet located in Georgia Institute of Technology's Invention Studio. So we're making it that in-house. Um, the shock absorber spring system will be connected to the mounting bracket and frame using grade, grade five titanium rods outsourced from McMaster Car. Uh, this material was selected as these elements will experience high levels of stress and therefore must be strong enough to withstand these forces without uh, any failure. And the suspension system will be connected to the main pod using that top bracket. And these brackets will attach directly to the main chassis frame of the pod. 
moving on to our testing. We'll be moving on to our testing. So we have two, we're going to run two types of testing. This is release testing and load testing. So for our release testing, we plan to put our stability system on a wheel, load it with weight, and then release it. And we're just going to measure how the axle moves with an accelerometer. And our goal with this is to just test how well a mass spring damper can be applied to the wheels and shocks. For our load testing, we plan to apply a load to the stability subsystem using the Instron 5967 machine. And this is, to, this is going to estimate the maximum load the stability system will need to undergo and also surpass because in case it's something happens during the running and we uh, endure higher stresses, we need to see if our system can support uh, more than the maximum load needed. And we're going to make note of any points of fatigue and or failure. So finally, the significance of our design, why we think that this is important is all in its simplicity. Um, a lot of things can come from having that simplicity, especially just being easy to manufacture and replace parts and ease of mounting. It has a really low maintenance cost and obviously we can easily replace any parts that become damaged. Um, it's very adjustable to our chassis. Um, especially since we're making the brackets in house. Uh, if one of our measurements happen to be wrong, we can always adjust that. Um, it's very effective. These shock absorbers are specifically designed to be able to handle vibrations similar to what our pod will feel. And a big uh, part about it is we don't really need any power. We don't have to deal with having to power the system. It'll just work uh, through the energy held uh, in the spring. So does anyone have any questions? How long has your team been around for? Uh, we've been around since 2018. Okay, cool. Very nice. And how many people do you have on the team right now? Uh, around 40 people. Okay, great.